Well, a lot of people come to my classes because they want to see if wood turning is what they're looking for in a hobby. And they don't want to spend all the money buying the equipment to find out that they're not capable of it or they don't like it or whatever. So they call me up, they find me on Google, and they call me and they ask me to do a workshop for them and introduce them to wood turning. So I oblige them. And those people, when they come, typically they sit down with a pad and a pencil and they start taking notes. And I thought, gee, that's, that's a little bit old fashioned, taking notes. So I thought what I would do is make a video so that they could refer back to it anytime they want to check what they learned in my class or what they saw in my workshop or my experience, whatever you want to call it. So this video is pens and I'm going to make a pen from start to finish just, just like I would if you were attending one of my experiences or workshops on pen making and that way you can refer back to it anytime you want. Okay, This is how I do it. Okay, I realize there's lots of different ways. I'm of the belief there's no wrong way and there's no right way. There's only my way. <laughs> yeah, that goes over well. So anyway, I'm going to get started here and I'm just going to make a pen from start to finish. And so you don't have to take notes. You can reverse this and uh, refer to it anytime you want. Okay, so let's dive right in here and let's make a pen. The first thing when you get ready to make a pen is you got to have a pen kit. Okay, these pen kits, uh, you can get them at lots of different places online. You can get them at Woodcraft or you can get them at Rockler, Penn State Industries, uh, lots of different places you can get the pen kits. Okay, and when I do a pen experience, a pen making experience, I use the very easiest pen kit available and that's the Slimline pen kit. Okay. So I have my slimline pen kit. I have a drill bit. I have a seven millimeter drill bit because so we're going to be drilling a seven millimeter hole. You need a piece of wood, okay? Or acrylic, or sometimes I use uh, Corian, okay? You see the Corian there it makes nice pens epoxy resin, acrylics, whatever you're going to use. In this case, I'm going to be using this piece of Bunya Bunya from Australia. <clears throat> Once you've picked out your blank that you're going to make your pen out of, the first thing we have to do is cut it on the bandsaw to the right size. So I would get my brass tubes out, the ones that came with the kit, okay, right here, these are the brass tubes that came with my pen kit. And I lay it on my piece of wood and I want to make my piece of wood, I want to cut my piece of wood about a quarter of an inch bigger than my brass tube. And that, and when I put my brass tube in, I want an eighth of an inch or, or less, somewhere in there, on each end, okay? So I've got this marked, as you, you can see here, I just marked it with a pencil. This is how far, this is about a sixteenth of an inch from the end and I'm going to cut it right there when my saw will leave a little kerf and then I'm going to do this over here. So I take this over to the bandsaw and I cut it on the bandsaw. Okay, now I'm not going to go over to the bandsaw and show you how to do that because you can cut it with a hand saw, you can cut it on a table saw, you can cut it on a chop saw, whatever kind of saw you have, you can cut this. Okay, I happen to have a bandsaw so that's what I use. Okay, so we have our piece cut. Okay, got our nice little piece of wood cut here. The next thing I do, and this is important, don't forget to do this, is when these brass tubes come from the factory, they have a little film of oil on them to keep them nice and fresh looking. And you want to get that oil off and you want to scuff up the surface of the brass tube so the CA glue adheres to it. So I just use a piece of 150 grit sandpaper and I just put it on the table and I just scuff it up like this. You want to make sure that you roll it and sand it. 
because you want to get every little bit of this tube scuffed up. You don't want to leave any areas that are not scuffed up. So scuff up the whole tube, make sure it's nice and scratched, and then do the other one the same way. Just scuff it up. And once I get them scuffed up, what I do is I roll my sandpaper over and just to be a little bit safe, I just twist it like this and get that end. Make sure the ends get nice and scuffed up. That's important to get those ends scuffed up. Okay? Just like that. So now my brass tubes are all scuffed up and they're ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill <clears throat> seven millimeter holes right in the center of my pieces of wood. Okay, so I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to show you how I do that. So, okay, I want you to notice that before I cut this piece, I drew a line right down the center. See that? That's so I can match my grain up later on. It's also so I know which end to drill. This is where my drill bit is going to start drilling on these ends right here that come together. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center on both of these pieces of wood. And then I'm going to drill them here on my lathe using the Jacobs chalk, okay? You want to get it as close to the center as you can. Make a little X, you can see the center there. Got my centers marked. Just gonna make a little dimple right at the center mark, right there, and right there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna mount these in a four jaw chuck, okay? I use my lathe and a four jaw chuck and a Jacobs chuck to drill out because I don't have a drill press. If you have a drill press, go ahead and use it. I think it's easier. But just watch, I'm gonna show you how I mount these. Okay, I'm gonna mount it just like this, right here in my Jacobs chuck, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sight right straight down the side of the blank that you see here. And I'm gonna make the side of this blank parallel with the bed down here, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna, make the, I'm gonna side it to make this parallel. And if you get two sides pretty close to being parallel, when you bring up your drill bit, your brad point drill bit, it's gonna be right there in the center, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna tighten it up. I want it snug, but I don't wanna crush the wood, okay? So I've got that done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my Jacobs chuck up and my 7 millimeter drill bit and I'm going to drill these. And then I'm going to repeat the process, do the same thing for the second one, okay? Okay, if you'll notice, right here, my match is right up. So I've got that thing centered right in there perfectly, okay? And I'm going to drill this really slow. I don't want to blow the end out. I don't want to blow the end of it out, the back side, so I want to just go through nice and easy. I don't want any tear out on the back side. So I'm going to go slow. That's about 500 RPMs. I'm going to put my hand here on my Jacobs chuck and hold it because I find that I always have to, I want to do that 
makes me feel safer. Back it out, clear any chips. Nice and slow. Back it out. Okay, at this point, I want to say something about this end right here. Okay, this is the quill. This is my Jacob's chuck. And there's a knockout rod in my quill, so if I bring my quill all the way back like this to the very end, it's going to push out. See that? Push my Jacob's chuck right out. You don't want that to happen while you're drilling. So you want to get a good idea, right? on the end of your quill and usually for me that's about an inch and I know that if I don't bring the quill back in that way more than an inch I'm good my Jacob's chuck is going to stay in that's important on the other end of that you have to know that as you advance your as you advance your Jacob's chuck right here you don't want to advance it all the way out because it's just, it's only a certain length and you can advance it right out the end of your tailstock and that would be bad too. Okay, I just went through the end nice and slow, didn't punch it, made sure it was cut. Okay, I get that little squeaky that tells me that I'm through. Okay, then I'm going to stop it and just to be safe, I'm going to test it to make sure it did go all the way through. See that? Nothing's worse than thinking you're all the way through and you're not. So always check. It's better safe than sorry. So now I'm just going to repeat this process. Do exactly the same thing. With the other one. Okay, see how far my quill is? That's when I stop, bring it back in. I don't want to extend my quill any more than that. To about there, clean any chips out in the flutes of my drill bit, slide it up, lock the tailstock down, and repeat the process. Being careful not to blow out the end. We just want to cut through the end nice and smooth and easy. We don't want to blow through it. And we're through. We're going to test it. Went all the way through. Right dead center. Look at that. Right dead center. So my blanks are drilled. Okay, this part of the operation is over. Okay, I've got my blank cut. I've got it drilled. I've got it marked so I can match up the grain. Okay. I drilled it going this way and I drilled it going this way. That's so these will match up. Okay. So my grain will match up. You got that? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these brass tubes in. Okay. Now remember I scuffed them up. Okay. They're nice and scuffed up. You want to make sure you get them. Okay, don't forget to do that. That's a disaster. Star bond, medium thick. You see that? Right there, star bond, medium thick. You can use thick or medium thick. I like medium thick. It works for everything I do. And so that's what I buy. Make sure you buy star bond, okay? I use a nitrile glove because I don't like getting super glue on my fingers. And I put it, my glove on my non-dominant hand. And when I put my glove on, I find that this is important. I want to make sure that my fingers 
are nice and tight. My fingers go all the way to the end of the glove. I don't want baggy fingertips, okay? Because that just gets in the way. So make sure you got nice fingertips. See that? You can see my fingernails right there. Okay? See that? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down something to protect my tabletop. Uh, either a spoiler board or a piece of wax paper or something like that. Got my super glue ready and I got my tubes and I got my blanks, okay? Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a little bead right around the end of the brass tube, just like this, okay? Get a nice bead there trying not to get any inside the tube. And then I'm going to lay a, a couple of beads, maybe five beads, right down the side. Okay? Just like that. See those beads? It's important to keep the tube oriented downward. That's the way gravity flows. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this brass tube right in to that hole and I'm going to slide it up and down and in and out like this. See that? And I'm twisting it and turning it, sliding it in and out. I want to spread that glue all over the inside of that. And then what I like to do is flip the blank over and repeat the process. Twisting, pumping, and getting that glue all the way around, cover everything. And then I just push it down the rest of the way, just like that. And remember, we want a little bit of wood. We don't want that brass tube right there, touch, you know, even with the top of the wood. We want a little bit of wood on each end, as you can see, just like I got right there. So once again, The last thing I do is I give it a little shot of Starbond Activator. It speeds up the drying process, okay? So I've got both of my blanks all glued up with my brass tubes. I've got a little bit of wood on each end, which I'm gonna square off. I'm gonna show you that next once this dries. And I let this dry about five minutes probably. It, it's dry, ready to go in about five minutes, okay? So there's two ways to square these ends up. You gotta get the brass tube perpendicular to the, to the top of the wood. The sides don't make any difference at all because we're gonna cut those away. We're gonna turn them away. What's important is that the brass tube be perpendicular to the end of the wood. And that's the purpose of the next step. Okay, this is method one of squaring up the ends of your pen blanks, okay? This is a little jig that I bought from Penn State specifically for this, for this process right here using a sander. It's just a piece of angle iron, okay? 
two pieces of angle iron, one here and one here, and they're welded together, okay, or glued together, and it's got this straight rod right here that sticks out, and this rod is parallel to this face right here and this face, okay, that's important. The rod is parallel, okay? <clears throat> then I have my miter that came with my sander, okay? And I know because a few minutes ago I just squared it up to make sure it was square, my miter was square to the face of my sandpaper. And the way I do that is I just use a square and I lay it on my miter like this and then I square it up just like this and make sure that my miter is square. So I want my miter right here 90 degrees to the face of this, okay? And you can see that it is, okay? So now I got my miter nice and square to my faceplate. Now I'm gonna take my jig and I'm gonna lay it right there on my table so it's nice and flat and it's right up against my miter and I'm gonna take a C-clamp and I'm gonna clamp the two pieces together. So now you can see that my miter and my jig are clamped together. So now I know that this rod right here that you see right there, that rod is perpendicular to the face of my sandpaper. It's 90 degrees, okay? Perfect. Just to be on the safe side, because I'm a little bit anal, I'm gonna put my square in here, and I'm just gonna make sure that that rod is absolutely perpendicular to the face of my sandpaper, okay? And it is. And then I check this side right here and make sure this is up and down, it's 90 degrees. So I know that this rod is 90 degrees, just like that, to my sandpaper, okay? So now, when I slide, so now when I slide my pen blank over the end here onto this rod, like this, I'm going to sand this end and when I'm finished I'll know that the end of the wood is absolutely 90 degrees to the circumference of the brass tube. Everything is nice and perpendicular, okay? I'm going to slip on my blank, turn this on. And I'm just going to sand it lightly. And what you want to see is that nice, bright, shiny brass circle of your tube. And when you have that, now you can be assured that this surface right here is 90 degrees to the brass tube. Do the other side. And don't sand too much away because you can sand your brass tube down and then it'll be, your, be too short. Once you get the one side done, you flip it over and you do the other side. Almost there. Got it. And be careful, don't sand too much because you will sand the brass. And then if your blank is too small, your pins won't fit together, okay? This is one way to do it. If you don't have a sander like this, there's a poor man's way and I'm gonna show you that next.
Okay, this is the other way to trim your tubes up, okay? You can see this one's nice and trimmed up. It's beautiful. It's ready to go, okay? This one here, it's still yucky. It needs to be trimmed, okay? But let's say I don't have a sander. Everybody has a drill, okay? And this device right here, this is called a barrel trimmer. And these are real inexpensive. You can get them at lots of different places. Uh, Rockler, Woodcraft, PSI, uh, craft supplies, all kinds of places. And it's just a simple little barrel trimmer. This right here is the same size you can see as the brass tube, okay? It's got a little blade on the end here in case you get glue inside your tube, which by the way is a real pain to get out. So try to be real careful when you're putting your glue on your brass tube that you don't get any inside because it's a pain. But it's got a little blade on it in case you do, and it'll trim it out just like that, okay? It'll trim, because I got, I did, I was careless a minute ago, and I got a little bit of glue in there, and it'll, it'll happen, okay? And this right here, this will trim it right out, get the, clean the glue right out, okay? Now, this tool has two blades right here, and these two blades are absolutely 90 degrees to this rod. So when I slip my pin blank over it, just like that, now those cutters are absolutely 90 degrees perpendicular to my brass tube. I'm gonna put it in my drill bit, my drill, just like this. I'm gonna tighten it up. I'm gonna use a clamp to hold it. Okay, and this is going to come, now sometimes you can just hold it like this if it's soft wood. And you can see it's cutting the end. Because this is soft wood. And I'm almost trimmed. Okay, so there it is, nice and trimmed. You can see that bright, shiny brass circle, okay? Do the other end. Okay, there we are. Two things, okay? If you're using hardwood or acrylic, you need a clamp like this that you can clamp your wood blank, okay? Number one. Number two, you want a piece of scrap wood underneath it with a hole in it. Your barrel trimmer is going to go all the way through and out the other side. So you don't want it on your table, it'll tear up your table. So I have this scrap board and I have a hole drilled in it. You can see it goes all the way through. So the purpose of this board with the hole is so you don't mess up your table. So you put that over the hole, you line it up over the hole, you tighten this, and now you can drill. And you don't have to hold it in your hand, okay? Because if you hold it in your hand and it's hardwood, it's gonna catch sometime and it's gonna spin, okay? And you don't want that. One more tip right here, okay? And this is important. I learned this the hard way. When you're using a barrel trimmer and you're trimming your barrels, please make sure that you start your drill right about here, spinning, okay? You want this thing spinning when it makes contact with the wood, okay? There's only two blades on here, and if you make contact with the wood and then turn it on, sometimes if your wood is soft, it'll split your wood right apart. So always make sure when using a barrel trimmer, you start it spinning and then advance it down into the wood, okay? So now both of my 
blanks are trimmed up and they're ready to go to the lathe. So let's head over to the lathe. There is one more important thing you need to know about making pins. And that has to do with the bushings. Every different model pen kit has its own set of bushings that are unique to that pen kit, okay? The bushings have two purposes. These are the bushings right here, okay? These bushings fit on the pen mandrel which is a seven millimeter pen mandrel and it's the same pen mandrel no matter what pen kit you're making they're all standard it's the bushings that are different okay so these bushings are for the slimline pen kit and here are the two purposes for bushings first you put one bushing on this way then you take your blank and you find the mark, your pen blank goes all the way down up against the bushing. And this is the line you drew. You put on another bushing, okay? Then you match up the lines. Because you want your grain all going in the same direction, okay? So I've got a bushing a pen blank, a bushing, a pen blank. I put on another bushing and then a spacer, which is just a bushing, okay? Then I put on my little brass wheel here and I'm gonna tighten it up really, really tight, okay? You gotta get it as tight as you can get it because what happens, the mechanical force of this wheel on this incline puts force against the bushing, against the brass tube, against the bushing, against the brass tube, against the bushing, and against the number two Morse taper, which is in your lathe. The bushings exert pressure against your blank so that when you turn the motor on, your mandrel spins and also your wood spins. Without the bushings, the mandrel would just spin inside your tubes okay so you got to exert that force as much as you can to get it to hold your pen blanks tight on the mandrel okay that's the first purpose of the bushings the second purpose of the bushing is to match your pen parts okay on this particular pen kit, the slim line, you'll see that this part right here, the little silver part, is what goes inside your brass tube, okay? Just like that. And you're gonna force it in there with a pen press. So when you turn your blank, you want this part right here to be nice and flush against the metal. You don't want a big bump like you see right there, okay? That would be horrible, okay? So how do you know how far to trim because this is not on there? Well, it just so happens this is the same diameter. Your pen parts is the same diameter as your bushing. So when you're turning your blank, the rule is never, ever, ever cut down lower than your bushings. In other words, the diameter of your wood can never be less than the diameter of your bushing. If you get down into that part, you're getting real close to cutting through to the brass tube, okay? That's important. So now it's time to go over to the lathe and turn our pins. Okay, we're up here at the lathe. We've got our pen mandrel in our headstock. And notice back here, I don't have a little brass wheel anymore, okay? 
Well, that method of holding your pen blanks on your mandrel is old fashioned. Unless you have a really good grip and are real strong, that brass is really hard to get on there with enough pressure to hold your wood pieces. So some smart guy or gal, engineer type, developed a mandrel saver and that's what this is and if you'll notice if you'll watch right here this thing slides right over the end of my pin mandrel and when I lock my tailstock down okay that pin mandrel is in my quill and it's right up against the bushing and so now I can crank this quill in and I can really tighten up those bushings on my pieces and anybody can do it even a weak old man like me but be careful if you put too much pressure on it it could bend your mandrel out a little bit and then your pieces would not be square so you want to put enough force to hold the wood but not to bend the mandrel okay and then when you get it you lock it okay and now you're ready to turn your pen at this point in time you turn your pen however you feel comfortable doing it. I'm just going to whip right through this using a couple different tools so you can see. Speed is your friend turning pens. So that's about 2300 RPMs. I'm just riding the bevel and then I raise my handle up. Ride the bevel. Ride the bevel, raise the handle. When I make a pen, that's what I use, okay? In my classes, my experiences we use scrapers okay and this is a popular cut right here with new people Okay, I've got my pen blank all roughed out. Now I'm ready for the next step. The next step for me is I bring the ends down to the bushings. And I do that with a round nose scraper. Just want to kiss the bushing. Do one side and then the other. I like doing it like this. I don't like my pen blanks to touch my tool at the same time. So I do one and the other. And I always cut from high to low or downhill. That's way easier for me. I like cutting downhill. I like doing everything downhill. Okay, so now I've got my ends down to the bushing. I've just got a little bit left that I can take away when I sand, okay? So now I've got my pen blank. Now I put my design in. If I'm gonna have beads and coves, I like to lay them out. And you can cut beads and coves if you're a beginner. I recommend using a scraper, a detail scraper to make beads and coves. That way you don't have to learn to use a 
spindle gouge. You don't need wood turning, tool sharpening equipment. You can make beads and coves just like that. Okay. And then I just refine the, the, the once I get the shape I like. Now I just bring it down, just shrink it down until it's nice and thin and pen sized. Not getting rid of my beads and coves. I don't want to remove my design. Moving my whole body, dancing with the wood, making nice smooth cuts. Just kissing the wood. Okay, then I come back and I deepen my coves, remembering not to go below the bushing. You don't want to go below the bushing. So that's it right there. And then I just smooth them over by cutting downhill. And I'll get them nice and rounded with sandpaper. Okay, so that's finished. This one up here. I'm just going to have a nice straight pen. So I'm just moving my body. My tool is up against my side. My arms are locked against my body. I'm swaying back and forth. I'm dancing with the music. And you can see that I'm getting a nice, straight, smooth, flowing cut. And that's what I want. I don't want any valleys or hills or bumps or tool marks. And that's, this is the best way to do it, is just move your whole body. Go right out over the bushing, bring your tool, your pen down to the size you want it. I like a little cove right here at the end for my fingers to rest in. See that? And right now I'm just moving my shoulders back, swiveling at the hips to get that nice little belly. And then down here, I'm back to moving my whole body. Right out over the bushing. Right out over the bushing. Right out over the bushing. Over the bushing, okay? So you can see, I didn't go below the bushing. Ooh, that's pretty wood. That's uh, bunya bunya. Okay, so now it's ready to sand. I have very few tool marks, so my sanding is going to be just real simple. Start with just a little 80, and I'm just going to clean this up a little. Turn my speed down to about 800. Move my paper. Don't make more grooves, so you move your sandpaper back and forth. Right over the bushing, you can't hurt the bushing. Sand right over the bushing. Okay, to get into the coves, I just bend my sandpaper over a little. Get right there in the cove. Got it. These up here, I put it in the cove. I lean it left. I lean it right. I lean it right. I lean it left. And it just takes the edge right off those beads and coves. Because you don't want them nice and square because the wood has a tendency to split if you have a square joint or a square surface up here on your tip of your beads. So lean left, lean right, lean left, lean right. And so you just want to go through all the grits and I usually sand up to 400 grit. Once I get to 400 grit then I use a scratch cream, okay? And that polishes it right off. Gets away, gets any scratches that I might not have seen. And my pan is nice and ready for my finish. And my finish is um, OB Shine Juice, okay? That's what I use for a finish most of the time. If I'm making an expensive pan, I use a CA finish. But 
if I'm using acrylic, I use a plastic polish. If I'm using, doing a Corian, I use countertop polish, okay? Just use one spot. Don't use that spot again. It's really getting hot. I have to move it. And you see the wax? I'm going to buff that out. Add some beeswax. Melt that in. Added protection. Want to get some nice heat going there so I can melt that wax. Get in my coves. Voila, it's done. Bunya's pretty. And I'm going to take my pen mandrel along with my pen parts over to the workbench where I'll take it apart and then assemble my pen. Okay, we're ready to put our pen together. This is my pen press. Penn State Industries. It moves this way, locks in these keys. This plunger is spring-loaded, and this is your depression arm. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is get my banjolitos out of the way there. They're always near me when I'm in the wood shop, because they're made from wood. They're my banjolitos. Okay, we're going to take our pen parts off. What happens when you get a little tiny bit of glue in your brass tube it makes it difficult to get off, put on. So try not to get any glue inside your brass tube. Okay, here's my parts. And this is how my pen is going to fit together. This is the back side, this is the front. This is the tip. This is the center band. And the pocket clip. It goes like this. This is your retractor, twist mechanism, and this is your ink cartridge. And according to the directions, the first thing we're going to do is put the tip in. So I hope my fat fingers don't get in the way. This end right here of the pen press has a little depression where you can put in your tip, just like that. It's on a spring, so you want to engage, put, move it up enough so it engages the spring and the, we'll hold it in place, just like that, okay? Now, typically, if you're doing this, this pen press would be bolted to a piece of plywood, which would be clamped to my table. I haven't got to that yet, one of these days. And I'm just going to carefully, nice and slow, 
making sure that the tip goes in nice and smooth and straight and I'm just going to push it in and snug it right up there just like that and you can see that the wood right there and the metal are nice and smooth excellent transition that's what you want okay so the next part is we're going to take our twist mechanism and it goes in with the brass end toward the tip and we're going to test fit it goes just like this we have to move this out because it's longer obviously I'm going to slip that right in there. I'm going to engage the spring. Locked in place. Okay. I have this so you can see it. And you have to kind of hold it right in here because this is so long and this is so long and has a tendency to bow up. So just, just kind of guide it. And I'm going to push it in right up to the end of the brass, just like that. Right up to the brass. And the reason is because I want to put this mechanism in here and I want to test how far the tip comes out this is, let's try that and you can see the tip just barely pokes its nose out so I got to push it in a little further. Right up to that line on the brass tube on the twist mechanism. And that's uh, perfect. Okay. The reason that I do that the instructions say to push it right in up to that line. But if you accidentally, when you're sanding this, you sand some of the, or cut some of the brass tube and the wood shorter, then you are gonna end up with your tubes, your pen sticking way out. And when you try to retract it, twist it, it won't go back in. So I've learned just to test fit it a couple of times just like that to make sure I get exactly the right distance, okay? Then the little brass band goes right over the end. Just force it on just like that. And then we're going to do the back side. You decide at this point in time whether you want your pocket clip Bring it up, engage the spring, This is just a friction fit right over it, and there you are. And your pen is complete. We're all done.
and there's your pin. Okay, that wraps up this episode of turning a slimline Bunya Bunya pen, um, which is modeled after my wood turning, pen making experiences on Airbnb. So if you like this video, click the like button, share it with your friends. Thanks a lot. See you next time around.